If you're in the boondocks, then you have a continuity problem. You have a continuity problem because you got to get out of the boondocks because your true home is not the boondocks. <laughs> it's flawlessly, immaculately, exquisitely, sublimely, gloriously perfect. But if you're in the boondocks, you know you're in a dream. You know you're in a dream, and therefore you have a continuity problem for sure. So, what do we do in this world? We try to pretend we're not in the boondocks. So we say, I don't have a continuity problem. I'm not dreaming. I don't have to wake up. I don't have to go back home. I can stay right where I am. So what we do is we try to insist that we're not in the boondocks. And if we feel we are, we try to graduate out of it, get better circumstances, better situation, better home, better location, better schools, better car, better job, better clothes, better vacations, better food, better grooming, you name it. Better, I'm better read, I'm more intelligent, I'm, I'm not in the boondocks. Look, look at my yard, better landscaping, better weather, better friends, you know, better family. Everything, 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 everything is designed, our efforts are designed so we can say, oh no, 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 this is fine. I'm not in the boondocks. Look how nice this is. This is wonderful. <laughs> There's no problem. I don't have a problem with the boondocks. So it's not a dream. Don't have to wake up. No problem. So the ego is the, is the adversary of salvation, really. And it tells us, you know, try to make things nicer. Come on, just get rid of that feeling you're in the boondocks and you're going in the right direction. Okay, so we have this huge, huge issue. Are we in the boondocks? And of course, what I say is we all are in the boondocks. This whole world is the boondocks. This whole universe is the boondocks. It's the backwater swamp country. Where, where we are is not our home. Okay, it's terrible, really. It's terrible. And, and we, we live this pretense that it's wonderful. It's not wonderful. And we live our lives desperately trying to project an image that I don't live in the boondocks. I've arrived. Yeah, I, I, maybe in the, a while long ago I was lived in the back country, or I heard some rumor about that. But no, I, I'm settled. I've arrived. I'm settled here, and this is wonderful. Uh, I'm not in the boondocks. I've arrived, and all advertising is designed to help you get this product, and people will know that you've arrived. You know that you've arrived. But how about others? Oh, <laughs> you know. So just. Be like this, and others will say, oh, they've arrived too. They've arrived. Go to this restaurant. Oh, yeah, like they've arrived, etc. So it's very effective. Advertising is actually very, very, very effective because they know the secret, secret, the ultimate secret of the advertisers. Just play on the sphere, okay? That subconsciously we're thinking, you know what? I really do live in the, the boondocks, some kind of this terrible jungle. It's just, welcome to the jungle. It's awful. But... I don't want other people to realize that, so I'm going to pretend that I don't. I'm going to pretend like, I, yeah, look at me, I'm great, everything's fine. So subliminally, deep down, we know we're in the boondocks, and the advertisers say, hey, maybe other people, they can tell too. You know, just between the two of us, we know, right? But what about the other people, you know? Maybe they, they might see through your facade. So you need to work on that facade and here's some things that you can use to work on that facade it'll it'll strengthen your facade strengthen your quote unquote self image right empower you empower your facade really and that's what people do that's what people do that's what we do here work on our facade and so other people look and look at you and say oh yeah they they've arrived yeah yeah i can see that they've arrived and i've arrived too <laughs> It's a <clears throat> but we haven't arrived at all. So how do we resolve this situation? We're, we're back here, you know, way back in the boondocks. And they're just uh, saying, oh my gosh, everywhere I look, it's, it's, it's the boondocks. Uh, there is a remedy. The Holy Spirit has a remedy for the boondocks. See, everything is equally blessed. Everything is equally blessed. Now, you might think that this means like shining a light on everything. It must be a very bright light 
No, it's like a little porch light or something. Very soft, gentle light. Like a turn on a porch light at nighttime, just really, you know, a 15 watts or just, just low wattage. And, but the light is not reflective like we're used to. It's not this kind of light that we're used to. It's a light that's, that extends and everywhere. Just from that little source, it extends everywhere. It covers the whole world, the whole universe. But without the intense heat, with the color of the sun, you know, even the sun cannot, this light can't get anywhere. But this little light, oh, this little light from the Holy Spirit gets everywhere and covers everything with this beautiful sacred glow as it were beautiful feeling of blessedness and sacredness and that reminds us of reality so keep in mind here there's something very very important that salvation is entirely pragmatic it is not idealistic if you follow idealism that's a big problem because it's pragmatic you have to be reminded of reality what is reality like it's the only way back because this is really a dream the fact is that the mind is dreaming all of this the mind is every everything that's happening in this world bodies lives events it's all a dream the mind is dreaming all of it entirely all the feelings all the emotions all the thoughts all the reactions all a dream all a dream so what do you do in such a situation except wake up from the dream? But first, the dream has to appear to be so beautiful that you're not scared to wake up because you'll get used to this incredible beauty and then you'll say, hey, you know what? This reminds me of uh, what? Oh, yeah, uh, being awake. And you wake up and you realize, oh, okay, this is, the dream was pretty similar to, to what I'm, you know, experiencing now. It was, you know, I'm, now it's even more beautiful, but it's pretty similar. So it's not the events in the world that remind you of reality. Reality doesn't have events like that we have here. It's not the victories, the losses, the triumphs, all this stuff is simply a dream. The mind is making all this up like a movie. Like the mind is like producing this movie as it goes, as it goes. Like one of those road pavers that just paves the road as it goes. It just lays out the, you know, the asphalt, just paves it as it goes, just constantly paving this road. But all of it is, no, is, is all imagination, all make-believe, total fantasy, complete fantasy. This whole thing is told nothing but a fantasy. So you ha we have to wake up from this dream. We have to drop the dreaming eventually. And it doesn't matter idealistic what, what you do. You have to be, have to experience a quality in the dream that reminds you of the quality of reality. And that is this seamless sacredness that everything is bathed in the same light. Doesn't matter heroes or villains, it doesn't matter because what you have to do is see everything bathed in the same light, which reminds us of the pure spaciousness of reality where everything is abiding in the absolute pure zero dimensionality of pure spaciousness. But of course in this dream we have all these heroes and villains. All oh, this turmoil, it's a training exercise. We're trying to forget reality we're trying to forget so it is true that these villains work to get us to forget that is very true but keep in mind that 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 we want the payoff from that forgetting which is to have a new reality where we're prime creator so actually some kind of deep down we aid and abet those who are uh, we aid and abet those at some level those who are villains because they help us forget reality. And we feel the only way we're ever going to discover our new home is to forget reality entirely. Of course, there is no new home. And so it's a useless exercise. Now, when we realize that there is no new home, then the actions of those who are trying to get us to forget are very uh, vexatious, you know. We want them to stop. So it's, it's not easy, it's not easy. You say, gosh, I wish they, you know, wish they wouldn't do that. But they're gonna do it anyway, they're gonna do it. Because this is part of the training program. Now, 
know, it's it's difficult to to realize this that everything the mind is just making everything up. Actually, nothing is happening. To, his body, everything, is is simply all in the mind. The mind is is making all this up. We we as actual spirit are just we seem to be just like observers of all this. We're not really part of anything that's happening. Actually, what we really are, our true self, is not part of any of this that's happening. So, and we're telling the mind to do this because we want to be the new prime creator. So we have to tell mind, hey mind, you know, let's let's not do this anymore. And um, let's let's wake up. Let's stop this dreaming. And then, but the spirit saying, "I got. I'm weary. Don't stop yet, mind. I have a continuity problem." So it should say to mind, "Mind, let's let's turn on the light that bathes everything in this blessed, this sacredness, and that'll help. Then I'll be able to tell you, okay, stop dreaming. I'm going to choose a different idea. And don't need to dream anymore." But the mind, you know, is just continually. Non-stop. It's in real time, as it were. Every moment, the mind is dreaming this entire situation. It's amazing. So pragmatism, it wins the day. Pragmatism wins the day. Uh, but at times, it's very difficult. So I, you know, I may be just spitting into the wind here uh, because uh, the times are very po polarized, and uh, but that's. That's how mind does its thing. <laughs> if you say, if you just get rid of this, then everything's good. But keep in mind that reality doesn't get rid of anything uh, because pure spaciousness uh, is everywhereness. Everywhereness it doesn't, isn't concerned with the, such issues uh, uh, of getting rid of something because there's no place where it can go, where anything can go. Anyway, this following video is... Uh, attached to this is uh, an excursion uh, I just went out and I wanted to highlight places that people think that you know they've arrived when they're there hey I've arrived I've arrived I, I don't have a continuity problem I don't have a continuity problem I've arrived nowhere else to go I've, I've, I've made it I've arrived and by going to those places and then highlighting as I'm there pointing out hey look this is really the boondocks you haven't arrived just because you're here you haven't arrived uh, and I hope I hope this is interesting for people to to just the idea of you know when you're out places and doing things wherever you are just have a little bit of, of awareness spiritual awareness and say hey am I have I arrived am I you know where I want to really want to be are this is this the jungle is this the boondocks and you will, if you have this awareness, you'll realize that part of you is looking just at every, at whatever looks good to you, and you're ignoring all the bad stuff. But if you see the totality of it, you will honestly say, well, of course this is the boondocks. I mean, are you kidding me? How, how could I ever possibly think it isn't? And that's a very powerful uh, realization. It doesn't, it doesn't blow your mind or anything. It just, it just, you just... You just it's honesty you say wow I am in the boondocks it means I have a continuity problem and so that enables one to focus on the, the resolution to the continuity issue to get rid of the blocks of fear and one of them is that the light will be just blinding or too strong no it's a very soft gentle light it's not even the light that we're used to seeing from the Sun it's not even like that uh, but it permeates everywhere, permeates everywhere. So, without further ado, let us get onto this excursion and just keep in mind, we're, we're looking at, hey, have I arrived or am I in the boondocks? Am I free of the continuity issue because I've arrived where I want to be? Or do I still have the continuity problem because I haven't arrived where I really want to be? This is this is still the boondocks. No matter where I go, it is still the boondocks. In fact, and then you realize, oh my gosh, the whole world is the boondocks. So, uh, look at the video with that in mind and, in, and enjoy the excursion as I settle back into the boondocks here. You see, there's something eerie 
about everywhere, isn't there? Absolutely. And however much you try to drown it out, whatever way you try to drown it out, it's still that way. It's still that way. There's something that doesn't strike us right. It makes us feel we're in the sticks, we're in the boondocks. Even if you see a nice, beautiful, lush fairway like this, you see, you think, oh, how nice it is. Let's take a picture of this. How bucolic, how nice. But then you look up here, you see this. You say, ah, I'm in the boondocks. Really, is, is, this, is this my home or am I in the boondocks? Yeah. And we know this isn't our real home, this place of impermanence. There's no way that this is our real home. No matter how nice we try to, to make it look like this. You see, we say, ah, how nice. And then we look up behind there and we say, whoa, that's kind of the boondocks there. It's kind of the boondocks, isn't it? Yeah. So, it doesn't, never quite fits properly, does it? Never quite fits properly. No matter what we do. That's why we need the vision of a blessed world. We may say from a distance, ah, oh, how beautiful it is. What a lush and bountiful world we live in. And then you look down here and you say, what in the world is that? This is a river, okay? And it is now January the 4th. This is the river. It's a river of stones, dry stones. There is no water, it hasn't rained in almost a year here in California going and getting to be a really severe drought. So that's the boondocks, isn't it? We're out in the boondocks here, really. We're in a place of very erratic instability, troubles everywhere we look. And uh, we're at the whim and mercy of all sorts of dynamics. Can't be happy with that, it's the boondocks. You see, at one time, this was a gorgeous, sparkling lake. Shimmering in the sun, we thought, oh my gosh, how beautiful our adventure is, how beautiful our journey is. Take a look at this now. Yeah, and look at all those golf balls, you see that? Balls that perished in the lake. The bones are now coming to light. We're in the boondocks, no matter what we think, how we try to slice it, we are in the boondocks. And we need to see everything as equally blessed, not just try to find some place that seems like not be the boondocks. See, this used to be, seem to be really nice, but look at this now, look at that. Gorgeous, beautiful place to say, ah, I've, I'm not in the boondocks. I don't need to go back home. I'm not in the boondocks. No, look at this place. Nice, right? I don't need to go back home. I don't have a continuity problem. And then we look over here and we say, whoops, what's this? Son of a gun. Maybe I do have a, maybe I am in the boondocks. Maybe I do have a continuity problem. Uh... Yeah, yeah, as in, gee, there's no water anywhere. There's no water anywhere. Maybe I do have a problem. Maybe I'm in the boondocks, which means I've got a continuity issue, right? It means I have a continuity issue. That's a fact. see this beautiful valley here and you think ah we're not in the boondocks and then you go here and you say what in the world is this what are these cliffs like this 
and then you realize that this entire area, this valley, has been gouged out by a river. That same river that you saw was dry over an immense amount of time. So you can just imagine how much water has come through here and ravaged the area in times gone by. Carved out this huge valley from these cliffs here. Look at that. So for the time being, we have this, but we also have the drought right now. So we are in the boondocks, folks. We are in the boondocks, which means we have a severe continuity problem. See, we can't just say, oh, this place is great. There's no problems here. I don't need to worry about going, going back home or going anywhere, going anywhere at all. No, we have a continuity problem because we need, we say, I don't, I, this place is no good. Where do we go? Where do we go? We go to some new reality or we go back home? See, that's the question. We have a continuity issue. You see, we try to make this world seem all so beautiful so that we can claim that we don't need to go anywhere. And therefore, we don't have a continuity issue. We just stay right here where we are. <laughs> right, with the coots. See, just stay with the coots here. That is what we struggle to do. Which is why we go for luxury and power and and try to get the nice amenities. Say, oh no, I'm happy I'm not in the boondocks at all. Everything's great here. You see, and the coots are, are singing, it's a beautiful morning. It's a beautiful morning. Uh -huh. Of course, then the dogs come walking along this path. <laughs> and uh, the coots go, uh, you know, say, wow, it's, we're in the boondocks here. Not so cool. That's right, not so cool. And it is a beautiful morning. And I could have played golf for free this morning, but I said, forget it. My back is killing me. And I played yesterday and I was absolutely miserable. So you see, everything seems wonderful, but it's not, it's not. Our bodies, right? Our bodies, hello? I said, no, everything's not, a, not great. Free golf, I said, for, passed it up. Amazing. So. We're in the boondocks, folks, which means we have a continuity problem. It means that we need to go somewhere else, okay? That's what it means. And the ego tells us that the boondocks are getting us ready to go to a new reality. And the Holy Spirit tells us that it has a way to make the boondocks look incredibly beautiful, to remind us of our true home that we really never left. Everybody's going somewhere. They're saying, I'm leaving the boondocks. I'm going somewhere important where I feel great, where it's all so beautiful. See, I don't have a continuity problem. Or I'm solving the continuity problem. I'm going somewhere. But really, we're, we're, we're in the boondocks here, folks. We're really in the boondocks. And we do need to go to truly go to somewhere which is way, way, way better than this place. Infinitely better than this place. And therefore we do have this continuity issue, right? How do we go to some place that's way, 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 way better than this place? Because be it ever so humble, there's no place like home, right? You see, it's not only the the earth that's cracked, but it's these trees also. Everything in perception is like a mirage, in that one moment you're seeing it, and the next moment you're not. See, no matter how beautiful it is, we're here in this beautiful place, but 10 minutes from now we'll be somewhere else, and this is nothing but a fading, fading memory, all right? That's all that it is, like a mirage. 
So what is it that is permanent, that truly stays with us? So as we move about the world, we're moving about these shifting, changing mirages constantly. So the question is, how does that remind us of reality? And the answer is, we need this overlay where no matter where we go, no matter what mirage arises, it's all felt to be very, very smoothly sacred. That is the key. Because we will see constant mirages here, no matter what. Like these little bursts of, of bubbles here. What is the ground though? You see the water. The water remains the same. The water remains the same. And these splashes like mirages rising and falling so quickly. That's like our perception. And yet, if we're able to see the beauty of the water at the same time, we're aware of that. Primarily. Then that will remind us of the pure spaciousness of reality. This beautiful tree here, this beautiful tree. Well, look what happens to this beautiful tree. This is what happens to it, all right? All these things are temporary, like mirages. Just like the, the foggy, foggy fogginess. You see, a little while ago, it was, it was sunny. There's the sun. Now, suddenly, it all shifts and changes, and it's now all cold and foggy. these people on the beach they came here and it was so sunny now look what happened ever-changing mirage everything is like a, a wave in this world form builds, it looks beautiful for a moment, and then it all comes crashing down, just like a wave. People came to play Pebble Beach today from all over the world, staying at the lodge, paying an incredible amount of money to come and play here. but. Look what kind of day they have. Here they come, here comes the group. That's the kind of day they have. Amazing, huh? Always changing mirage here. Even at the place Pebble Beach, even that is the boondocks. Look at the boondocks here. Even Pebble Beach is the boondocks. The kelp was in a kelp bed just a little while ago. And now it, here, here it is getting ready to rot on the beach. Really in the boondocks, folks. Even in the most some of the most priciest uh, real estate in the world, most coveted place, the temple of golf. It's the boondocks. Just, just look. Just look. It really is the boondocks. That means we have a continuity problem. No way around it. You journey. You take a journey, and then what happens? You end up blocked, right? You end up blocked. It's the end of the journey. Well, the journey gets kind of rocky, it's what happens. 
gets very rocky here. Yes. You go through a rocky spell, uh, and then you see there's there's some more journey here. <laughs> oh my lord. It goes on and on, right? It goes on and on and on and on. This journey to our new home, which doesn't exist. And we are told, oh, but it will exist as soon as we forget about our previous home. We still have attachments to our previous home. That's why, that's why it doesn't exist yet. But you're creating your new home by forgetting your previous home. That's the spiel that we give ourselves, the deception. None of it's true. And yet we, we're spellbound by it. We're just heading up here. Heading up here to Pebble Beach. There's a uh, caddy. Caddy for the guys. There's the green. Down here, the restless ocean. Totally the boondocks, if you look around here. No matter how nice you make Pebble Beach look. It's still the boondocks, folks. Yes, it is. And they may think, oh boy, we're, we're not in the boondocks. But they most certainly are. They most certainly are. They say, no, we're here at Pebble Beach. You know, look at that green. It's awesome. But no, you're in the boondocks. It's all a little a, a mirage. We think we've escaped the boondocks. We have no continuity problem. We're here playing at Pebble Beach, folks. What, what, what continuity problem? We're in heaven. Come down here, a bunch of slippery al algae, slippery rocks. Look out, Phillips, we're in the boondocks. You see? Careful here. Now we try to think, hey, this is exciting. That's that's how we keep going. We say this this is an adventure. This is so adventurous. Wow. Wow, how cool. I'm so cool. I'm on this incredible adventure. Adventure, but it's really self-deception. What is that? Looks like a cave. Ha! Huh. Oh my gosh, you see? We really are in the boondocks. Right underneath Pebble Beach. Look at this. Drainage. Coming down here onto the, into the ocean. That's where that water's coming from. And we say, oh, how cool. We found some quartz or something like that. Uh, yeah, but here comes, here comes the ocean, you know? Here comes the ocean, disturbing us, disturbing us. So our, our adventure is, is a very much a disturbed venture. A venture of disturbance. Turbulence, turmoil, constant change. So we're not happy with our adventure at all. We say, whoa. We say, uh, when's it going to be over? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And then we try to pretend that we're there. So that's why we play around at Golf of Pebble Beach in the fog. So we can say, hey, we're there. We've arrived. We've arrived. All advertising is subliminally designed to give you the impression, without being too obvious about it, you see, <laughs> is that you've arrived. Because if you're too obvious about it, 
then people say, ah, oh, you you haven't really arrived, or otherwise you'd be nonchalant about it. So they're supposed to be sort of a casual elegance, say, oh yeah, I've arrived. Look, I'm walking along the walking along the beach, my pebble beach here. I've arrived. Whoops! Here comes the water. You see, that's gonna soak my shoes. Have to avoid it. Avoidance, sudden avoidance. Oh yes, but we have arrived. That's advertising, all of that. The secular, materialistic, humanistic planet that we live on is all about saying, hey, what's, there's no continuity problem, we've arrived, we've arrived. And of course the ego tells us, act like you've arrived. Come on, act like you've arrived. That's how you arrive, is you act like you've arrived. Get ready, your arrival is almost here. You just gotta act like you've arrived. Dress like, dress for success, dress like you've arrived. Get that house, get that car, get everything. Casual elegance, you've arrived. Come on, live your lifestyle like you've arrived. That's what it's all about. That's what the advertising is all about. That's what California is all about. You come to the ocean here and you say, hey, I've arrived. Of course, there's nowhere else to go. So that's the problem in California is people keep are pretending desperately like they've arrived because there's really nowhere else to go. You run into this specific ocean here. And so everyone is very kind of smilingly confident and relaxed like they've arrived, yeah? We're dwelling in paradise here. Almost, some little, you know, it's not quite, quite it, but let's just kind of pretend that it is and that, that'll create the actuality of it. That's what the, all these teachings, you know, new age teachings about create the actuality of it by pretending that you're there. That's not it. That's not it. So, we have these ghosts here, lining up putts. Can't even get them in the picture, it's so dark. Look at that. There you go. You see, they think they've arrived. But from my standpoint here, they're just like ghosts in a dream. they can hardly see the golf course. And yet, they're dressed for success. They dress like they've arrived. So we're all nervous, like we're thinking like, you know, I haven't arrived yet. And we look up and we see in the magazines, the glossy pictures everywhere, the advertising, all the models, they look like, hey, I've arrived. Look at, look, look, look what I'm wearing. Look what I'm accessorized. Look where I am. I've arrived. Look what a beautiful person I am. I've arrived, how about you? You can arrive easily, just go down and buy this. And that's what you want, you see? There you go, easy, easy, easy. You don't have to spend all that this time trying to clarify anything and, you know, no. Just go down and buy this product and then people look at you and say, oh, they've arrived. Obviously they've arrived. They have the latest and the greatest. And uh, that's what I want, too. And of course the advertising mocks, mocks those who, who are wise and say that's not it. We have a whole culture now of mockery. The, the advertising over, the, over a lot of time here has actually brought about generations, maybe, maybe six or seven generations. Um, or the attitude of mocking genuine spiritual effort to clarify has been so ingrained in them that it's, you know, to them it's, it's, it's like some just, you know, ridiculous, absurd, even mental illness to even uh, attempt, attempt to clarification. That is how it is now. It's permeated entire society. And 
the uh, when you go look at hotels like the television, the, the listed channels, there's not a single channel on there that has anything to do remotely, anything to do with spiritual aspiration, with with desire to clarify. Not one channel, zero content. Wherever you go in the public sphere, zero content. So the secular humanistic consumerism is the new age religion. It is the new religion. And it just permeates the attitudes like water permeates the fish. I mean, it's, you're just uh, abiding in it. So it makes it brutally difficult to feel right about how you spend your time when everybody else is spending their time differently. And it, it, it gets to you, it gets, gets to the best of them. Absolutely it does. So we're all kind of living like ghosts in a very ghost-like, eerie, foggy atmosphere. An atmosphere where wisdom seems to vanish, it seems to be obscured. Nobody really seems to be able to, to, to tune into it at all. Can't get it in focus. And then you get into a situation where all you have are these flies everywhere, you see? Well, the flies have taken over. The nuisance, all these nuisance flies. And they hang around the stinking rot. That's what the flies do. Wherever you go, there's these colonies of flies. You see this? Colonies of flies. With nothing on their mind except feeding on the rot of consumerism. That's how it goes. And you try to find yourself a little enclave somewhere where you think you've arrived, think you've arrived. Maybe you spend some time in contemplation, contemplating the situation. Yeah, just hanging out with the birds. Right? I'm gonna contemplate the situation. Contemplate the situation. Contemplate the situation. Say, I have a continuity problem. I have a continuity problem. I have a continuity problem. have a continuity problem. That's it. And all these people, they have a continuity problem. You see, because everything ends up like that tree. Everything ends up like that tree. All these people have a continuity problem. You see, they come here to escape the continuity problem. But, it doesn't work, does it? You got sand in your shoes. But we're always hoping to say we've arrived. Oh, no continuity problem for me, we've arrived. If you have a place like this, you've arrived. By definition, you've arrived because there's no place else to go. No place else to go. You've got the Pacific Ocean here. So you must have arrived. By definition, that's called the illogical logic of, of plausibility. That is relativistic. It doesn't, it doesn't have a real goal. It just says, well, this must be it, because there's nowhere else to go, and we're in the, you know, we're at the, the final, final place here. So therefore it must be, must be it.
This is the kind of illogic that you must ferret out. Because it's not true. You must take the time to look at this. People think, if we just get lucky, if we just get lucky, we can have a place like this. So we have a culture based on luck, hoping to strike it rich. Just get lucky. Just get lucky, that's all I need. And then I will have a ride, and therefore I have no continuity problem whatsoever, having arrived. Magic. Matter of fact, there's a lot right there just waiting to be built on. So a culture based on luck instead of contemplation is what we have. Having lost what arriving really means. We now think it means to have a place like, like this in a location like this, overlooking, huh, overlooking the... Driving. Overlooking this. They say, we have arrived. premier lot just waiting to be built on. And there's another. So people spend their whole lives just hoping to get lucky or by hook or by crook, trying to gather the sufficient funds to finally secure themselves a place where they can say, look at us, we've arrived. We have arrived. There's a place for sale right here. You see? And here's a place being built. So somebody is feeling, you know, we have finally arrived. Once we get that house done, we will have arrived. There's a priest and an old padre, arm in arm, we'll walk at daybreak. It's good to touch the green, green grass of home. You see, we're all on a journey, right? But we need this kind of help on the journey. So we don't end up getting lost. Thinking we've arrived. sorts of things to remind you that you need you have a continuity problem and you need to focus on it
Of course, these do not substitute for true contemplation. These are sort of talismans, you know, talismans to remind you, but you got to actually do it. place used to be a place where people would come here and spend time in contemplation supposedly but probably just the effort to survive they did not have so much time to these days is actually more ideal but nobody uses it that way. What a shame. This is a cork oak tree. It probably looks like a graveyard here. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. You see all those who have been, those adventurers who have gone through this death-based training program before. This is where they end up. Of course, we all hope that after we complete our training program of dust to dust, we end up in the paradise. Not so. It's not true. Today was the Three Kings, the Magi, following the star, the probably supernova, and uh, it's all decked out. the father who just gave the mass here. <laughs> so, this is a, a reification. It is a reification. It's for those who still, you know, they need concretization of it all. But, uh, hey, you know, the people were, were shorter back then, weren't they, when this was built? It's very, <laughs> the ceilings are very low. Holy cow. Yeah. You see, all of this is symbolic. There's all this sim symbology to it. Thing. Trying to speak in parables and 
symbology. See, all of this form is the belief that space, spaciousness can be crystallized. All right? That spaciousness itself can be crystallized. But it cannot be crystallized. All right? It cannot be crystallized. And yet we are so accustomed to this belief that we have a continuity problem. So we need to see everything as equally blessed without exception. Keep in mind that we believe that pure zero dimensional spaciousness, the absence Pure absence, pure isn'tness, can be crystallized. It cannot be crystallized. And therein lies our continuity issue because we're so used to this. So we must always bear this in mind, right? We must always bear it in mind that pure spaciousness cannot be crystallized. Pure isn'tness cannot be crystallized. Okay? But we have this continuity problem, obviously. So that is what we have to focus on every day, for sure. We have all these different forms of crystallization, don't we? And uh, we get very used to all this. And yet we must recognize.